Ms. Tai, uh, cattle producers in South Dakota and across our nation work hard to produce high quality beef. Americans recognize this and by and large, they want to know where their food is coming from, which is why I'm a longtime supporter of country of origin labeling. And while the World Trade Organization, which you were just discussing, made a ruling in 2015 on cool for beef, pork, and other meat products, this remains an important issue to many producers in my home state. In fact, the South Dakota legislature just passed a resolution calling on the Biden administration to, to remove barriers to mandatory country of origin labeling when negotiating trade deals. And so I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked the nominee for Ag Secretary uh, Tom Vilsack, and that is, what are your thoughts on the WTO's cool ruling and its impact on U.S. producers, particularly its impact on beef producers? And then if, as a follow-up, if confirmed, would you be willing to work with me on finding a path forward, preferably in a WTO-compliant manner, on country of origin labeling to help address the concerns of not only South Dakotans, but uh, uh, livestock producers all across the country? Senator Thune, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this in our earlier conversation, but the first case that I was handed when I walked in the door at USTR in 2007 uh, was to um, uh, uh, take on the longstanding case between the U.S. and EU on the U EU um, import ban on U.S. beef. Um, so I feel like I learned a lot about um, uh, the U.S. industry back then, um, and uh, I myself obviously was raised on um, uh, American beef and am, am a very happy consumer of it. Um, on the WTO uh, cool ruling, um, uh, that's not been a popular ruling um, back here at home um, with uh, senators like yourself and the stakeholders uh, themselves uh, and, and also on the other side of the aisle in terms of those uh, who really supported COOL as a, a consumer uh, right um, and um, um, uh, for the policy space for Congress to act. Um, as you noted, um, this is an area where uh, USTR and USDA uh, have a lot of good work to do together. If confirmed, I look forward to working with Secretary Vilsack on this, and um, I do commit to you uh, to coming back to you uh, to talk about the continued interest um, of yours and the industry in having uh, country of origin labeling uh, that will survive WTO challenge. Thank you. Um, and I would say that you know we have labels on so many things that come into this country. Um, the things that we wear, uh, it's ironic to me that we can't have labels on the things we put in our mouths. Uh, and uh, the American people, I think, deserve to know where their, their beef is coming from. Uh, our farmers and ranchers depend on open markets and reliable trading relationships around the world. Expanding market access and ensuring our producers remain competitive is a key to stabilizing the U.S. ag economy and powering our national economy forward. If confirmed as our nation's lead trade negotiator, what specific steps will you take to expand U.S. ag products in new markets such as Southeast Asia and Africa? And I would ask if you could just comment, too, in, in talking about that. Phase one on China, um, our exports to China significantly increased since November, which is welcome news to American agriculture, but they're still quite a way short of their phase one commitments. Uh, what uh, USTR would intend to do with respect to making sure that they comply with the, the phase one uh, targets. And then also, it's <laughs> a lot, a lot in there. But expanding market access is critical, and so um, equally important is the proper enforcement of the ones, the trade agreements we already have. Which, uh, if confirmed, I, the question I would have is, what steps would you take to ensure that our trading partners are playing by the rules agreed to in existing agreements, and in particular, uh, USMCA. Senator Thune, um, uh, those are a lot of questions in there. Um, so there's a lot for me to respond to, but um, if I focus on um, the, the main um, uh, themes, um, I think that I would like to um, thank you for this opportunity to clarify when we talk about, uh, and when I talk about um, uh, being confirmed and advancing a worker-centered trade policy, um, that workers uh, does absolutely include uh, agricultural workers, um, our, our farmers, our small family farmers in particular, real people uh, who make up the American economy. So um, I want to make that clear. Uh, and in terms of um, a trade policy that works for our workers, um, a trade policy that works for agricultural workers uh, is very much a part of that focus as well. Um, on the enforcement side, um, on USMCA, uh, I talked about earlier in my opening statement about um, uh, caring and nurturing um, the agreements that we have to make sure that they uh, deliver on the promises that have been made. Um, that also goes for the other trade agreements, obviously. 
obviously that um, uh, that we have under our belt. Um, and so um, I, I just want to make clear that uh, that is a priority for me. Phase one China. As well. Phase one China as well. Uh, different kind of agreement, right. but it's an agreement. Right. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I see my time expired. I have uh, perhaps a question on network uh, security, um, but I will uh, defer that or su perhaps submit it for the record. But Ms. Tai, uh, thank you, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to working with you. I, I thank my